broadcasting from the business capital of the world. This is the Podcast Business News Network. Welcome back to the show. We are honored to have DJ Stripes joining us here today. He's here to help focus on, you know, the healing process and helping you get out of victim mentality. He's doing so much for so many. I'm moving forward.net. JJ, welcome to the show today. How are you? I am wonderful. Thank you for having me here. Well, it's a pleasure to have you. We are so excited to talk to you today about your journey and all the work that you've accomplished. Uh, First and foremost, thank you for being here. And would Mm -hmm. you mind just introducing yourself? Tell us a little bit about what you do to start. Well, it it all started. I mean, I've always been the one that that people come to, but I had I do disaster relief, so I was dealing with thousands, over a thousand families that have lost everything. And storms aren't doesn't happen all, all you know all year long. So while I was off, I got my certifications and I started you know helping others helps me heal. Yeah, does that make any sense? Of course it does. <laughs> Thank and it's you. just I fell in love with it. And I mean, the, it's not I don't do it. I mean, you have to have money to survive, but it's not about money. I, I give more away than it. Just, it just I didn't have that person in my life. Yeah. So I want to be that person for somebody else. Beautiful. Well, there's so much to you. I want to go back in time. And you mentioned, you know, your aunt, your sissy always told you, if you put your mind to it, you could be anything you want. So tell us first, where did you grow up? And tell us a little bit about your background. I I grew up in Jacksonville, Florida. Mm -hmm. Um, My mom, she was a single parent. I was her fourth child. Uh. And so she she had some complications. And my aunt and uncle raised me. My aunt spoiled me to a to a T. I mean, and then my uncle, I always thought he hated me because it was that tough love. Yeah. But he made me an, a magnificent. You know what I mean? He's the one that started that spawned my writing. Start, started mm-hmm. my first spawned my first book. You know, and he was tough, but he taught me. He made me resilient. You know, that's where a lot of my resilience comes from. Beautiful. And so let's talk a little about your childhood, some of the things that you, uh, you know, went through. I know we all we have our stories, our journeys, and it makes us the yep. people who we yep. are today. Would you mind sharing? I will. Um, you know, I've been this. I don't this going to be triggering, but I went through some sexual abuse. I went through abandonment issues, you know, mommy and daddy issues. And I had them for a long time, yeah. you know, and it took me and it takes forgiveness. Yeah, I've sat at my mother's feet you know, at the end of her bed, you know, and just talk. And th- this is what we communicate. My mother's 83 years old and she's doing shadow work. God bless. So I just, I just, I, I've always been the giver, you know, in the neighborhood that I grew up, we had a little bit more than everybody. And I would give my toys away. And my aunt, she was, where's this? And I'd say, I lost it. She, she slapped me. She said, don't lie to me. I know you give it away. You know, oh. it's, it's just the heart that I have because I'm tired of shining. I like to help other people shine, if that makes any sense. Of course it does. And we commend you for the work you're doing. And we're going to get into that uh, specifically. So you mentioned a person doesn't just wake up in the morning, decide to rape a child, right? It had to be done to them. There's a cycle that's going on that repeats itself generation after generation. (laughs) And you mentioned uh, until someone says it stops now, it ends with me. And you became that chosen one in your family. And I commend you for this. And I know you want to talk a little bit about the decision here to begin the process of healing and the work you're doing to help. So, by the way, let me just confirm the website. Tell us again how we can reach you. I'm movingforward.net. Perfect. And let's talk specifically now about some of the ways you are helping people out there. Well, and I'll, and, I'll, and whenever you're talking about generational, yeah. my great grandmother, she was a madam. So she sold my, gra- you know, my papa yeah. bought my grandmother, you know, that's how it was done. And th- that's the generational curse. And then the the, the, ma- the family that I married into there, it was the same process. So God put me in people's lives to, yeah. to and, I, and I have a YouTube channel exposing all of this, you know, the, the sound of freedom was good, but it's happening right here in our backyards. But, um, like I say, I, I do a lot of outreach. But I have like, I don't know, 60,000 followers on social media Amazing. and they reach out and people say, I, I don't, I, I don't feel right charging people uh. because I've, I know, I know that sounds dumb, but I've given away more than a hundred books because if it can help them, wow, I just, that I would rather, but now I'm to the point I've shut down my disaster relief company. Okay. So now we're going to, we're going to monetize now, you know, okay. but like all of my channels, I don't monetize any of my channels 
because I don't do it for money. I do it because I never had that person and I want to be that person for somebody. Oh my gosh. So just back to, so a little bit more about your upbringing and background. Mm-hmm. So tell me now in your like teenage years, uh, yeah. adult mm-hmm. years, you, you went into what field? Um, I was, I got my associates in marketing. Okay. So I was in, I was a door to door salesman for many years. Then they, I, they promoted me. I, I, it was a VP of marketing for ADT security. You know, that's a big name for, they used to laugh at me because while the executives were out on the golf course, I'd be out there and the guys in, my, in, in, in the field, mm-hmm. because how can I ask you to do what you don't see me doing? Yeah. You know, I was, we were number one in the country for nine years. Amazing. So I just, I don't, I might've had a big title, but I'm a blue collar guy. I want to, I'm a hands-on person. Mm-hmm. And if I was at an entrepreneur's meeting a few years back and they said, what makes you successful? And I said, making my guys better than I am. Wow. You know, a lot of people that teach you just enough, but they won't teach you to be better than, you got to be better than me. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to take the torch. Well, empowering your life with coaching is really what you're doing here today. I've read some reviews about the work you're doing. You're doing personal development coaching, confidence building, relationship coaching. Uh, there's a lot to you. Where did you want to start? I know this is our first show together. I'm excited to have you here. Yeah. So if you want to talk more about your background first, or do you want to get started with how you're helping people? I mean, Well, whenever you go to a psychologist or a psychiatrist, they're kind of looking down their, their their nose at you in your glass. See, I've lost a child. I've ah. lost a I've lost a, a spouse. Uh, you know, the love of my life. Um, I've been through drug addictions. I've been through prison. You know, and I've been through the, my my clients. They can come to me because I relate to them. Yep. And they can open up whenever you're going into a psychologist or a psychiatrist. They're looking down their nose with their degree. They they have never experienced. They've never walked through the. Sh- you know, they haven't been out there in the mud and muck. They I've really can't there. empathize. Some can, maybe, but a lot of them don't. They, you're right. Exactly. They have that education, that book work, that street, but they never went through it. They never dealt with sexual abuse. They never dealt with drug addiction. Exactly. Normal things that uh, you and, and I the have abandonment dealt. issues. Exactly. And people, I call it mommy and daddy issues. These days they call it abandonment issues. But yeah. we all have some kind of trauma from our child that affects how we act today. Yeah. Because a person, they. People, they're triggers and they don't understand their triggers, Yeah, you know, but boundaries was my first self step of self-love. Yeah. That was my third book that I wrote, Boundaries Unveiled, because a person will only treat you how you allow them to treat you. Yeah. And until you take your power back, you're going to remain powerless and people's going to run over you. They're going to stab you. They're going to call you only when they need you. Yeah. And we've got to just got to, we have to stop that. Mm. You, I mean, you, do you agree? 110%. My goodness. You know, it's and, just, you know, we need someone and it's hard to do alone to help us, you know, learn, you know, from our, you know, what we've been through and mm-hmm. to realize there's resilience in this. And this could be a good thing for what we've been through as hard as it is, but like you took your life and you turned it around and you're helping so many and you're helping so many fulfill their journey towards happiness right and taking that step i don't know what i did here oh it's okay i can't see you i'm here i'm here i'm still here okay okay as long as you can see me yes i got you you're good you're good i um, promise i do a lot of outreach Mm -hmm. i go out at night because where i live i mean i'm in jacksonville florida Mm -hmm. um it's a it can be rough but i've been in the streets you know so i go out there and i i build people up you know i mean If they don't want to hear it, but I go out there and I tell them my story and I've got a story, you know, I mean, but I I know that God puts people in your life for a reason, if only for a season, you know, everything happens for a reason, but every person that you encounter in life, you have to learn from them or they're going to learn from you. So I try to be the best and I hate that word try, but I'm the best. I, I try to be the best me there is. And 
That's beautiful, and we all should, and we all should have a chance. Now, you know, just don't take your word for it. I mean, let me, because I'm going to ask you some personal experience of people you've helped, but I also was reading some testimonials, and for example, I have Sarah W. here who says, after weeks of feeling unsure, I am moving forward, brought clarity. Their confidence-building service was life-changing. My doubts have disappeared, and now I navigate life with newfound confidence. Frank G. says, struggling with heartache, I turn to I am moving forward. Their supportive coach really helped me understand my patterns, manage my emotions, grow in confidence, and now feel empowered and hopeful in my romantic journey. Uh, someone yeah. else here, Susan, was uh, having career issues, was stuck in a rut, and went to use your career coaching services, and the change was phenomenal. Uh, they truly helped me discover my potential and move forward in my career. And I want to hear more <laughs> about this and some other examples when you get a chance, but amazing. Well, I'm writing a new book. It's uh, Love, Is It Love or Attachment? Okay. Because I was in a situation ship for five years and madly, I'm talking about from the minute Ooh. that we met, it was just like breathtaking. But, and I'm going to say this, when God wants to bless you, what does he do? He sends people into your life. Mm -hmm. But whenever the devil wants to distract you, what does he do? Yeah. He sends people into your life. Have you ever met that person and did the, from the minute you knew the, you, your souls and, you know, yeah. And it was not lust that, you know, and they told me later on down, you know, a few years into it, that they had prayed whenever they was a child that God would send somebody because they was sold and, and raped and, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, and to send somebody into my life to love me yeah. because it, their mother taught them there was no such thing as love. Yeah. And I was that person, you know, and they died a couple of years and it just destroyed me. But I've realized over the last two years of studying me that it was an attachment. It wasn't love because love is mutual. Yeah. Love is kind, you know, not toxic. So, and that's how I helped the, the one. And then the career, let me, I've always, a, another person's opinion of you is none of your business. Because one thing I found, not everyone's not going to like you. Not everyone's going to like you and you can't make them like you. True. When have you been down here? And you change your frequency and you start doing better, my family mm -hmm. included. Whenever I was out there doing in the streets, they loved that. They had somebody to talk about, but they're not going to talk about my successes. Yeah. So, and you have to get, you have to understand that whenever you start elevating, the frequencies don't match anymore. Yeah. And it's not personal. It's just like sometimes you have to love people from a distance. Whenever I tell you I've cut everybody out of my life. Wow. God plucked everything out of my life that was not serving me. See? Iron sharpens iron. Now, how do you work with people in doing this? Are you doing in-person services or is it mostly virtual do, like this? It's, it's mostly virtual. Okay. Um, I have some I have some people here that, you know, but it's, you know, the, the random things that, that people hit me up off one of my social media. You know, I was buying a truck a, a few months back and I walked around in the parking lot for um, about an hour and 20 minutes talking wow. to this guy, you know, and just to try to get him past where he was because a person said something to me a few months ago. He said, you're always shining your truck. I said, well, that's my therapy because you don't know how many times over the last two years that I wanted to go to sleep and not wake up. And I've never been suicidal. But after that impact in July of 2022, it broke me. And that's what God was doing. He was breaking me mm -hmm. to put me back on the potter's wheel and make me wow. for who I'm supposed to be. I mean, there's a purpose. We all come to, lot, to God, I mean, to come to earth with a gift and a purpose. And I'm, I'm, I'm chasing my purpose to fulfill it. You know, it's God's purpose in my life. Beautiful. And I want to talk now, by the way, is it just you as a coach or do you also have other coaches that you're working it's, with? It's, it's just me. I mean, I have some, I have some colleagues, but they are not, they're not working directly with me. Um, entertaining that mm -hmm. as soon as whenever we start whenever we start growing and um but as i said uh, whenever i was out on the road with all the clients that i had out there i mean my company was making a couple million a year you know I'm, i can't charge a person that just lost their house or they're built rebuilding their house for the, for the third time mm -hmm. you know and as i say i don't i don't do it for money but now once we start growing i've got some real I, there's different categories you know, because I can handle four, you know, but I'm just going to have, we're going to be the whole thing, you know, 
the five star, if you, you know what I mean, a, a, a good five, you know, five star meal. So it's just you're going to get everything that you need. Now, how does it work? Let's talk about life coaching because people might say, well, what's the difference with life coaching compared to uh, going to a counselor, a mental health coach? Would you mind elaborating on that? Well, life coaching. Well, I, I went into see, I have my degree, my uh, diploma in um, in counseling people with sexual abuse. It's more. I, I've gone to psychiatrists and psychologists and they went, you know, as I say, they cannot relate the, the, the client, mm-hmm. you know, they, they're not relating. So I'm not going to judge me because this is a no judgment zone, Yeah, you know, and I delve more. I'm a, I'm a, I don't really want to talk about, but I'm a Gemini. So I love research. I love, I want to know everything about you, you know, and if people are honest, you know, we can do this. If if I can if I can be healed, if I can be fixed, um, anybody can because I I was I was a mess. I really was a mess. So what we we just have a plan, you know. We we assess everything, and it's it's a it's a process, and that's how healing is. Healing is a process. Yeah. And it's you're never you're never going to be totally healed. It's like paving paving a road. Oh, it's going to be nice for a while, but there's Eventually, there's going to be some bumps in the road. Yeah, and cracks. And, <laughs> Lots exactly. of cracks. Yeah. And you have to overcome that. You have to, you know, because that. what is this here to teach me? Whenever things happen to you, Oprah said it, Brett, but what is it? What is this here to teach me? Mm-hmm. Not why me, because that's I just I just released yeah. a 30 uh, day journal on because it's getting people out of the, the victim mentality. Yeah. So true. Life doesn't happen to you. It happens for you uh, because there's going to be someone out there that needs your experience yeah. to help them heal. Now, when you do start working with you as a coach, how does it work? How many sessions do you need? Does it vary for everyone or, you know, how long does each session last? Could you break it down for someone out there who may be interested, I, but a little anxious? I, like, how does I it do. work? <laughs> Thank you. Well, <clears throat> our first one, I mean, we, we do... If I do group sessions, it's like, it's like an hour and a half, mm-hmm. you know, twice a month. Um, one-on-one, it will assess the, the issues and see what, what see what you know, if you mm-hmm. do an hour a week or I like to do it every two, because I don't want to, I don't want to kind of bring them, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. I'm not going to let them go out a month at a time without mm-hmm. seeing, because I have to keep it because it's just like whenever you start a habit, whenever you start a new thing, you got, if you don't yeah. keep repetition going, it's going to go away. Yeah. So I, I, one hour sessions will assess. And your first, I'm, I'm going to give you, we're going to consult or take for free, you know, and let's see the plan that we can come up with. Perfect. That's going to mostly benefit you. Now, do you mind, um, you know, being our first show together? Mm-hmm. I, I'm not sure if you want to journey down and talk a little bit more about, you know, uh, your background or some of the client testimonials, what you're doing. But, um, you know, I love that you created your own start. And a lot of people come from, um, you know, a background that wasn't easy and it's hard to get motivated. What would you say was your source of motivation to become so successful? Well, I had this, this little handyman business. I started in 2017, but I was working for FEMA at the time. So I, I went from FEMA doing storms, doing hurricanes, and I went over to the contracting side. I learned everything about the FEMA side, and then I switched over. And it was she was she was slow, you know. And my mom she she uh, told me one day, maybe you maybe you just need to go get a job. I screamed at her, and I've never done that. I said I'm not stopping till I fulfill my dreams. This is what I love to do. I lived in Puerto Rico for a year. You know, it's just my, I love doing that. I love helping people. I love helping people rebuild their lives. And 90 days after that happened, we made three quarters of a million. And the next 18 months, we did three million, three, three more. You know what I mean? It's just like whenever breakthroughs coming, all hell's going to fall down on you. You got to keep on persevering. You got to get up and keep moving. You know, whenever things start falling, whenever you, whenever you're working on something, things starts falling apart. Mm-hmm. Know that that's the devil because he knows what the breakthrough. He knows you're coming. You know, yeah. he knows what your purpose is. You got to keep on persevering. And the way my uncle treated me growing up, I got 
to the mindset, if I washed his truck, he would always find a place. If I, if I stacked the wood, it was always wrong. I beat him at I started beating him at his own game. So I said, you're not going to beat me. So I'm going to be the best of the best. And in everything that I've done since, whether it were sports, I've been the best. And that's what you have to do. You have to take your power back. And so many times, um, you know, people uh, can be resilient. Uh, you can be changed. And you got to, you know, remind everyone who's out there listening today who could be struggling because you also, um, you know, with your help and your, your coaching, your guidance, you've saved many lives. Could you share a story or two or three? Um, I have. Um, I had a guy. They were they had they went through the same thing they they were they were addicts and they were on fentanyl and his other half died and he was just giving up and i stayed with that guy in the in the evenings made sure he went to sleep you know i've locked him in his when we locked it his parents live on on the same property but we locked this car down you know so he couldn't get out but he he fell a couple times more. We got him into rehab. And then I was going over there every couple of days to, to see, you know, because he never had that father. He never had that big brother. He was an only child. He was full. And we kept him. And now he's doing his own outreach. He's going to uh, he's going to, to his to the Bible college. He wants to be a minister now. And I have another guy. He works at the gym. He's a big muscle muscle guy. But he's got a very soft voice and he's very intelligent. But if you wouldn't know it, you would think he would be in the LGBT. You know, that's that's you know, he don't come off like that, but he's so soft and humble. And I tell him, I said, you know, and he's not that way. But I said, do you know, you're the, these guys out here that always have to think they have to be tough because they worry about what other people think about them. And now he's mentoring to the to the people in the hood. You know, does that make any sense to you? Oh, he's, a, he's a he's a he's a big muscle bound black guy, but he's got a soft voice. My daddy was six six four, oh my goodness. big, and, and he, but he had a high pitched voice. He was a ordained minister, you know, wow. and he would pray with you. He would laugh, with, and but don't ever get the don't ever let the preacher thing fool you, you know. But people think they worry about what other people think. Yeah. everybody has a gift and the things that you go through is not to break you it's to make you because there's going to be somebody in your path throughout life that needs you that's not as strong as you oh yeah and you have to empower them yep and you see I, the, oh, go ahead you see what the world's going what, what we're going through right now yeah Look what look! I, I just can't believe the world is the way it is, and such turmoil. And to have you know the shooting the other night, and it's just like, what is? Why are we all so divided? What, what's happening here? I, I don't do politics, but whenever they, whenever he got into office, I said, what the? Heck? But Trump's a Gemini, so he's very you know. But whenever he went to Korea and did what he did, and we didn't get blew up. I said, wow, he's not an idiot. And I started paying attention. Mm -hmm. He's God's president. I was over in Louisiana during uh, Hurricane uh, Laura. Yep. And I was helping this guy cut some trees. I didn't know he was a preacher. And we started talking about the Bible. I was raised in the church, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and he says, you have a gift. You have an insight that I wish I had. He said, because you see the Bible. Wow. You know, it, it's just it's just one of my other spiritual gifts. And Trump is God's president. He's fulfilled three prophecies out of the Bible, mm -hmm. you know, and like he's doing for Israel. And whenever he, that, whenever he come out right after he was shot, <laughs> the, his eyes had changed you because the, the glory of the Lord is on him. No, he, when I, I cut my fingers off in 2019, I, I bled out. I died for a few minutes. I always thought I was invincible. God had woke me up. And that day, right after I got out of the hospital, I started, I am moving forward stay in the present because we're always worried about the past or trying to stay in the future either being depressed or anxiety let's work in living today you know because trump i can see in his eyes the cockiness is gone there's humbleness there because he knew his life was if if he would not have twitched you know that half that inch, moment he was yep. out of there he's going to be the one because he, he claims to be a christian and 
he's going to be the one that's going to be on his knees praying for this country to get this country right. <clears throat> oh, my goodness. Amen. I'm not into politics myself, but you said it right. You said it yeah. right. Oh, my goodness. Well, we are also just about out of time. We have two minutes left here on the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't believe it goes so fast. Uh, how um, you know? How did you want to leave off today for those out there who may be in need of your services? And I hope we get to speak again because you yes. are very inspiring. Um, um, I'm JJ Snipes on Facebook. Reach out. My, my, my phone number is 904-463-8755. That's my personal number. Call me. You know, if it comes up spam, but text me, you know, and let me know who you are and I'll call you right back. Love it. You know, and I, I'm moving, um, I am moving forward two 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 at gmail.com, you know, or I'm moving forward. They messed up on my, on my website. I is, I am moving forward. Oh, um, got it. Yeah. At G, I mean, at, uh, I am moving forward.net. Perfect. From there, we can find you and contact exactly. you, read your reviews exactly. and all you've done and all that you're doing. Um, thank uh, you so much for being here. It's been a pleasure. All my books are, I give you all my links because people, journaling has it's helped change my life. Uh, there's a couple journals in there. Yeah. One for sexual abuse people, you know, so get it, you know, and if you can't afford it, reach out to me and I'll send you one. Beautiful. Thank you again for being here. Thank Excited you so much, to have you, JJ Snipes, and looking forward to the next time we connect. Thank you for doing what you Stay do. Stay blessed. Same right. here. Thank you, sweetheart. Bye bye. Bye bye. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Of course, my kid's in the right car seat. Well, I think he is. Yeah, my kid's in a booster seat. He was ready to move up. He is ready, right? Her car seat looks like the right size. There are probably rules on when to move up to a booster seat. Aren't there? Rear-facing, forward-facing? I think I have it right. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Are your children in the right car seat for their age and size? Don't think you know. Know you know. Go to safercar.gov slash the right seat. I know my child's in the right car seat. Or else I wouldn't get in the driver's seat. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council.